Hey everyone, welcome to the Movie Throne. I'm your host, the one and only King Kansas here, bringing you another movie review your way. Yes, it's one of the biggest movies that went down in 2023. You know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about my buddy, Tom Cruise's film, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, Part 1. So big, so long, that it had to make it into two parts. And I'm telling you right now, if we got... What we got in the first one, I can only imagine what the second one is. But I got to wait for two years for that, God's sakes. Anyways, we'll leave it at that. You guys know the drill. First portion, I'm going to do a non-spoiler. So if you haven't seen it, I'm not going to ruin the film for you. And in the second half, I'm going to spoil a few details of why I liked or disliked the movie or what they could have done better. My overall thoughts, it's going to be a little spoiler revealing, okay? So you're welcome. Okay, let me give you some uh, quick, I guess... Uh, Pointers, if you want to call it that, guys. Anyways, just details, okay? Uh, it's came out in 2023 in movie theaters. I didn't see my buddy in July. I should have went to go see him. It's about two hours and 43 minutes long, guys. And uh, in my opinion, you're not going to feel it at all. I'm telling you, two hours and 43 minutes felt like, I don't know, two-hour movie. Like, if it was 45 minutes extra than we should have got, it needed all of it. I'm telling you right now, the way the plot is told the way things unravel tom cruise is tom cruise man i'm telling you whatever scene you put that man in amazing Haley atwell got introduced in this you know that's captain carter for all you guys marvel mcu people steve rogers captain america's love interest or his love she was great in it and the way they introduced her to tom cruise and how tom cruise had to deal with her because they're trying to find something that got lost at the beginning that fall of course it's like every movie you don't want it to fall into the wrong hands because it could be the men the end of the world kind of thing but anyways we also got back uh ving rames simon Pegg, rebecca ferguson vanessa kirby could be the next uh you know sue storm isai morales amazing to see this man he is kind of like the major kind of like bad guy who wants to do a whole bunch of craziness and gets his hands on this key of some sort uh you got palm plemutev that's uh mantis she plays paris uh henry Cerverni, he plays kit rich he's the kind of like the cop fbi guy who tries to capture him and stuff like that and bring him to justice no he's not he's one of the guys he's kind of like the guy who's in charge let's say that that's the guy who tom cruise kind of deals with which doesn't kind of trust and stuff like that Shea Wiggum, that's the guy. He's the FBI guy, Briggs. And you got Carl Hughes. He's the other guy. He plays Denlinger, I think, like that. Scumbag. Anyways, but when you got those bunch of group of cool actors in it, phenomenal. Like, I'm telling you, the action is amazing. The storyline just keeps on going and going. And the way they introduce every single character and how they appear in this movie makes sense. It's not just, let's get a pop. Let's put this person here. Or let's put... Rebecca Ferguson's character. No, no. Everything was tied up properly. And even the main reason why Tom Cruise is kind of lured back out and to kind of go crazy. It's pretty cool. The opening scene with the submarine, that's all I'm going to say. The way that goes down and you have this thing that you're like, you could see that being a possibility even right now, right? But it was entertaining. Jokes were good. Um... The interactions between certain characters, Simon Pegg, of course, the original cast or the crew, was good. Uh, like I said, uh, Haley Atwell, holy shit. Not only stunning, but she brought her acting chops, man. It was good. Her interaction with Tom Cruise and, you know, the do I trust you, do I not trust you? And then Tom Cruise kind of revealing that she knows what she's up to was pretty cool. It's like cat and mouse, right? I'll just say that she's a thief. And the way he kind of interacts with her and the stuff that he has to go through and the chase scenes and all that. Holy crap. The car scene. I'm just going to say that. Phenomenal. But uh, overall, amazing movie. I can't wait to tell you my quick thoughts in the spoiler version. So there you go. That's my non-spoiler. Put that damn spoiler thing up in the corner. Spoiler alert, guys. You've been warned. Holy shit, this movie is phenomenal. I loved it. Is it as good as Fallout? I don't know. I've just seen it once. i got to see it twice. But for my first time watching it, holy shit. The story makes sense. Do they need a part two? Probably not. But 
It's Tom Cruise for God's sake. If he wants eight hour to do an eight hour movie divided into make two parts, go for it because we're not going to get the second part till later. But anyways, the the AI, the artificial or AI artificial intelligence being the main catalyst that it's evolving and it wants to kind of like do damage and stuff. And the only way to get stop it is to get a key. And there's two pieces of the key. And the opening scene of the movie is phenomenal. The sub that they're kind of like wondering, is it really a thing attacking us, not attacking us? It deals with the Russians and shit. And then it kind of like outsmarts them and screws them up. And then people get their hands on the keys. You got different players who want it, like the usual. You want the good guys who want it but really had bad intentions. Tom Cruise doesn't want nobody to get it. He gets his team. Bumps into Hallie Atwell's character. Holy shit. Like, she did a job and a half. Her interactions with Tom Cruise, the chemistry, phenomenal. Like, great. I'm telling you, whatever actor decided to show up, what, whether it was Vanessa Kirby later on at the club, uh, Ferguson, when he meets her in the desert, he has to track her down so he can get one portion of the key. Uh, sad moments, you know, when she... Bites the big one later on. I was kind of sat on the bridge to kind of protect Haley Atwell's character and Tom Cruise. Ethan's trying to get there in time, so that doesn't happen. You got the so-called Paris, the assassin, uh, played by Palm Klemitev, was good. She was excellent. Just enough of her, but not too much to overpower the film. Like, she had her part and her reason. Everybody showed up well. Uh, you got Shea Wiggum, who played Briggs. He's kind of like the FBI guy. Kind of like Tommy Lee Jones when he's chasing Harrison Ford for The Fugitive. He's one of those kind of guys. You got Carrie Yules, or Yui's, Princess Bride. You know exactly what he plays. Den Linger, I think his name is. And he's the guy who's playing stupid, but he's really kind of maybe pulling the strings. And then Tom Cruise's old boss is also a douchebag. I'm talking Kit Rich, I think his name is. But Isai Morales plays the bad guy. Phenomenal to go opposite of Tom Cruise and how he's connected to him somehow. From the way beginning, from the first person, I guess, maybe Tom Cruise's first partner. I don't think it was his wife who got killed in that flashback. And he kind of like, did I see what I saw? Kind of thing. Uh, the facial recognition in the airport. The chase scenes. The car scenes in the street. I can go on and on. The action. Holy shit. Like I'm telling you, the pace of the film was phenomenal. I don't think there was really a one downtime. And even when the downtime was, it went so fast you didn't even realize it was going, right? That scene that you guys see in the trailer that he goes with the bike... Holy shit, that's the funny thing. When he's chasing the damn train, that train scene must have been about 15 or 20 minutes long. I don't know. He's going up and down and trying to figure out a way to get on there and making promise to Haley Atwell's character and the way she's a thief and stealing it back and forth, the little playfulness before between the two. The chemistry was great. Um, overall, great. Even the way the movie ends, you're like, okay, he had to leave her behind because that was the original plan because there was only one damn parachute. There's always one damn parachute to get off or glider thing just to escape. Uh, to leave her behind and perhaps to go back maybe for her and to conclude this whole damn storyline because the AI is still out there. Tom Cruise has the key. He has to find the sub now. Let's submerge so he can end this damn thing before someone else gets it. So I'm very interested to see where the second half of the film or part two is going to be. But... Very impressed. Uh, Fallout level, probably I would say. I wasn't bored, not even one minute. Like the two hours and 43 minutes felt like five minutes, guys. But overall thoughts, loved it. Recommend it. Go check it out yourself. If you're a Tom Cruise fan, you're sold automatically. If you're a Mission Impossible fan, I'm telling you, the series has just got better and better movie after movie. And uh, Christopher McQuarrie, phenomenal. Like those two guys, Tom Cruise, and magic. Boom. That's all I have to say, but... Loved it. Loved all the actors. Can't wait to see part two whenever that decides to show up. I hope all the actors are in it besides Rebecca Ferguson, unfortunately. She had to be sacrificed unofficially, but she did. And uh, Palm Clemens uh character as well. She bites the big one. But the train falling down and shit. I'm telling you, I'm, there's so much I'm leaving out with them like kind of flying in the train. The train's going off the cliff and he has to go from trail car to trail car to get out to survive. I'm telling you. That whole scene is phenomenal. The train scene is good. Every part of the film is good. Anyways, ramble long enough. Go see Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, part one for yourselves. Come back in the comment section. Let the king know your thoughts. Is the king always right? Probably. But Mission Impossible, you this film, you have to see Dead Reckoning. It's the seventh film in the franchise. And I'm telling you, there's another two more. I can't wait to see those two as well. Check it out for yourselves. Like, share, and subscribe. Check out my other reviews, all the other fun stuff. And don't worry, the podcast is coming back. 
December 1st of 2023. New format, back to normal. Trust me, you guys are going to like it. And, of course, there'll be giveaways and all that fun stuff. But, anyways, be the hell good. Stay off the King's Run. I'll see you guys where? Right here on the Movie Throne YouTube channel. Take care and definitely be the hell good. Or Tom Cruise is going to come after you.